just wanted to say thank you again for everybody joining us this evening and the opportunity to be sharing some food and sharing some time and sharing some space together in all of our busy schedules. Um, <clears throat> again, I want, also want to thank um, Amanda Falloon and all of you who are a part of uh, the St. Cloud Friends of the MIA, um, allowing us to be here and allowing uh, uh, young professionals in the clay realm be part of this evening as well. You're doing great things in our region, St. Joe, St. Cloud, all the way through the cities in Rochester, and it means a lot to uh, the overall art community in sustaining foundation for learning and foundation for empowering people to do and follow their passion, or passions. <clears throat> I'm, not, I'm not good at this. This road that what I'm going to share is a bit about what we do at the studio, but it's not a straight line. And <clears throat> I want to share with you a bit of a story of this path, but not, uh, it has a few layers to it. Um, I think first off, there's some familiar faces in the, in the, with us this evening and so a lot of new faces and for those of you that we haven't met I'll give you a little bit of background about where I'm from kind of where we've been and maybe why we're here this evening or hopefully I grew up in North Dakota uh, I grew up with uh, a family that was raised with uh, farming growing spring wheat and winter wheat who are immigrants from Czechoslovakia and Bohemia, who lived off the land daily. Um, I also am part of a family who is Norwegian and who are ranchers and cowboys who work with their hands daily from the land. I'm gonna try to share with you about what my work is, my, my ceramics, but more so about why it's important to me that it's clay. Uh, I grew up on the plains and the land of big sky and, and open space, which is different from where we live now, Sarah, my wife Sarah and I and our family here in Minnesota. But um, a lot of what I do and how I approach my work is, is a connection to the land. Uh, I'm not a farmer, I'm, I'm not a rancher, but what I appreciate about growing up in that family and that experience is the fact that um, there was a connection to where we were. You all had an opportunity to see some of the work in the studio or in the gallery this evening and a lot of that work is actually all of the work is clay that we dig by hand from exposed clay knobs from the land where I grew up um, we also dig clay from other areas in Minnesota and other places that are very much a relationship and a connection to the land and an energy of that's positive that um, we employ in the studio. A big thing from when I was growing up living on the plains was that um, a sense of community, okay, and a sense of place. And in my work, hopefully, that speaks from being in the gallery this evening of what that is a little bit without knowing words beforehand just by seeing some pieces. We grew up with hospitality. We grew up with ex doing exactly what we did here this evening about sharing food and sharing drink and sharing conversation with, um, with no, everything fades away. We're just here sharing time. Um, so, <clears throat> Uh, 
I remember as a little boy, about Micah's age, our son, when I'd go with my grandfather and they'd be baling hay in the field. Well, we'd, we'd stop, they'd pull down the tailgate of the truck, we'd have some, they would have some coffee, we would have sandwiches, egg salad, I think. And they'd have a thermos of coffee and they'd, they'd spend time. Whether it was 10 minutes, whether it was five minutes, that didn't matter. It was about taking the time out of the day from what their busy schedule was to share in that. When I went to school, um, in high school I was first caught with the clay bug. And in the back of my head, back of my head there was, this, there was uh, these, uh, this foundation that was been built that I didn't realize, okay? Uh, when I started high school, uh, there was a wheel tucked in the corner and I asked if I could try it out and my art instructor said yes, please give it a, give it a try. And that was the first time I had ever tried clay. There was no formal instruction. I ended up teaching myself how to use the wheel and my teacher had the wherewithal to say, yeah, you know, you should do that. She had all these different disciplines and she allowed me the time to do so. The things that stayed constant at that time were, I was hoping to be, uh, work for my art history degree, get my MFA, and to uh, work in a gallery or be a curator of some sort. Uh, I transitioned out of NDSU and actually went to the University of Iowa because they had a great art education program, they had a great studio program, they had a great um, overall program that led to um, the path that I was on, which was this clay bug that I caught in high school, really. And when, when I was going to Iowa from NDSU, uh, I had this very first uh, interaction with the St. John's Pottery as a field trip, as a freshman in college. And it was really the first time that I've ever seen something where, as a young person in school, a passion of somebody doing something that was so much bigger than who they were, that it was like, if, if I want to be a potter, if I want to have a studio, then this is possible. This is absolutely possible. So this, this, so this information from when I was younger of r being raised in ranching and farming families was part of my foundation, but seeing this new information from being in college, it was like, well, I, I really enjoy clay. I really have a passion for this. There is absolutely a way this can happen. And, and, and then it was tucked away in the back of my head. And I out, was off doing other things. I, was a, I, I rowed in college. I was a, a rowing teacher, built a rowing program at Iowa. My wife is a rower. So rowing and clay were like right here. Everything else that I was doing went, went away. It just, not by choice, it just kind of fell away. So clay was there and, and rowing was there. Transitioning from school at NDSU to Iowa, I made the decision right then when I transferred for some reason that I wasn't going to, uh, uh, I changed my major from art history actually and Italian language to studio ceramics and Japanese language, the day I was registering, um, to hopefully someday and s to follow a passion of whether I knew it or not, of having a studio of our own, of, of a place of making, of making things that help bind people and places together. Because these things here, all these things are essentially connecting us. And what I didn't realize at the time was that when I w went to Iowa, I started to learn about wood firing that we do now. I started to learn about all these other facets of clay that I wasn't aware of at NDSU, but when I was there, what I learned about was that, that there, the possibilities of, of, of what it was, of, of, of following passion. Um, I had an opportunity to come back after all this time 
not quite a full circle, but come up and help at, at the St. John's Pottery uh, f with the graduate students and wood firing, which then reinitiated me into this idea of what, what I had first, my first semester of college, this idea of, okay, this having a studio working daily in pottery to make things that you use daily came in the front of my head again. And so it was there and then it was tucked away again because I was doing other things. When I finished school at Iowa and I graduated, I had my art degree, but I also had a, almost a minor in Japanese. Because at the time I wanted to go to Japan to study tea ceremony and Japanese ceramics and Asian aesthetics because that's my, really what I was drawn to at NDSU in the first place. This idea of things that are beautiful but are not perfect, the things that are, are perfect and beautiful. The, the idea of material that you find, that you use from a source that defines a place and creates place because of what it is and how you use it. An art object being something that is an art object because you use it every day. You develop a relationship with it. I use the same piece every day for, for weeks seven days at a time, something I'm drawn to. Not my work, other friends, other people's work. This connection to something. When I graduated, I was in a situation of, I have no idea how I'm gonna use my art degree. What is the next step? I followed this young lady up to St. Paul where she was a high-risk labor and delivery nurse and I was thankful enough to follow her there in the first place <laughs> but I was also very thankful because that also initiated this connection or opportunity to to follow a passion there are many ways in, in I think our lives where the path changes quickly. It's, it's here, this is where I'm going, but no, it's not anymore. And what happened at that point was I followed Sarah to the cities because I love her. And I also had the opportunity to potentially, uh, I, <laughs> not knowing what to do on the path of clay, to continue the path of clay because I want to utilize these skills in my toolbox that I had applied for teaching clay classes at Northern Clay Center. And it was hired by the person at that time that kept me on the path of clay. Going to Iowa was another opportunity of keeping me on the path of clay and changing the path from what I thought was okay and really putting myself out there where it's really uncomfortable and, and studio ceramics and, and following through with that through my graduation but following Sarah to the cities, following um, having the opportunity to initiate teaching at the Northern Clay Center has kept me on the path of clay, and that's 14 years now. So my work in ceramics, what I'm trying to do is ground people and bind people to place and to create place through things that we make that you use daily. This isn't a bottle. Johnny and Brady may have heard Sarah probably too a little bit of this. This is not just a bottle. This is not just a cup. This is something that that when I was three or when I was seven, I remember this Mickey Mouse cup that I had from McDonald's. <laughs> it, it's nostalgia, it's things that connect you to a place and to a time that when you think about those specific things lend to the fact that <coughs> you can create that over again in a different way that creates a moment 
of appreciation within where time has stopped. Okay? This is a combination of all the elements that we deal with and we'll work within ceramics and wood firing. This is something that, this is a vessel that holds something that's um, nourishes, but it's also empty. This is something that has weight to it, but also lifts you up. This is something that we as people sharing food and time is rare. I didn't realize until I started my apprenticeship and I chose an apprenticeship and I was chosen to do an apprenticeship because I didn't want to go <clears throat> and personally get my MFA. I chose it as if I want to be a potter or I want to be an electrician, then I'm going to study with a master electrician. So I asked and I was chosen to study with a master potter that does it daily, that has the business skills, that has the, 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 the connection to what I didn't know until then, the material. Because this isn't a bottle. This is, this is, this is something that's this is something that's so special that you can't put a price on it. It's like time. Time is our most precious commodity. Something you can never get back, and something you can never, never change if you miss it. So in my daily practice in the studio, coming from college to my apprenticeship, I dove into this, digging and using local clay from here, and understanding that this defines a place, an ex explicit moment in time that is not the same anywhere else in the world. That these pieces that we are making have their own energy and own power outside of how we shape them, but just because of what it is. And being respectful of this material and having a conversation with the material lends to what the pieces are. March 10th, I think, I was looking back at my journal, March 10th, um, 10 years ago, 2004, March 10th of 2004 is when I finished my apprenticeship at St. John's. And Sarah and I have been trying to figure this out on our own since then. And uh, the biggest thing, I, thing I've taken away from my studies at, in my apprenticeship have been the closeness to material and things that one makes are, they're intimate. Okay? There's no way, no way else to say it. They're intimate. You live with them daily. It's like a spouse. It's like a child. It's like a family member or a grandparent. These things that, that, that give you something that you can't put your finger on but nourishes you the same way this cup has liquid that nourishes you and hydrates you and makes you fulfilled. I'm a functional potter. <clears throat> so my work is a conversation with digging clay and Jenna and Johnny and Brady being in the studio they work differently than me their, their, their conversation with this material is different than what, how my conversation is because I'm not a sculptor like Brady is. I'm not design savvy like Johnny is. And Jenna focusing on the karate wheel that I learned on is different. So everybody's voice is different even though we use the same material but the conversation is the same. 
We're not changing this material because we can. This and the pieces that you saw in, this, in the gallery this evening essentially are uh, buckets of clay that we dig with a pickaxe and a shovel, brought in the pickup, mixed with water, enough where we can throw them, work them, slab build them, stones in them, not screened, not processed, minimally, minimally processed. And I want to approach the material that way since my apprenticeship and continuing forward as part of my body of work because it's too easy to just to change it because I can. And that's been how I've been approaching this like native clay since my apprenticeship. We use Richard's clay when I was apprenticing. Subsequently, since we've been at our home, we've dug some clay three miles from our house here in St. Joe that defines this place. We go back two or three times a year to North Dakota and we dig small batches of the clay where I grew up on the land from my parents' land that they allow us to go back to that defines that place. Grand Marais, Madeline Island, Dubuque, all these places that have a relationship to where we can be. A really big reason why we go back home and dig clay is because we're not there. I grew up and wanted to move back home. Sarah wanted to move back to near her parents. We're almost exactly halfway in between our parents as grown adult children with families. So a big reason why we go back and dig clay from where I grew up is because it's a connection to where I grew up that grounds me in that space, that place. We may only be there for half an hour digging clay in the land. We hope to go camp there and spend more time on the prairie, listen to the metal larks, and listen to the wind blow through the prairie grass. But at least it's that and not truckloads of it where there's not that connection anymore. This is very special. It's more than a bowl or a cup or a sculpture. These are things that have conversation that if you look at it long enough and you observe things long enough, this nonverbal communication happens with the thing, the object the bowl or the cup or the sculpture that maybe we haven't noticed in our daily lives that are so fast. Digging clay and helps slow down, helps me slow down a little bit. What I didn't learn in school was how to have a studio or to work towards that. And what I learned from Sarah and learned from other people was that, again, time is our most precious resource. And to be honest with you, finding our space here and finding our home in 2006 where we are now and through my apprenticeship with Sarah and our son being born six months into my apprenticeship and him being with us in the studio every day for a year, that's time I can never exchange for anything. I feel so very thankful for that. And what Sarah has done for me as a professional person in clay is given me the time to actually pr dig in and, and really pursue and to focus. <clears throat> because for me personally, that's what I need. If you boil everything off the top of the pot, what I'm trying to do with the studio and anybody that's been in the studio is to give them what Sarah's given me, is time. 
um, time to create something that is important and following a passion of yours or theirs and also having the opportunity for these young people to engage all of us this evening about what they're doing to hopefully give them tools enough to when they finish at our studio Brady and Johnny and Jenna but give them enough tools where they can say well um, this might be an option for me down the road in some fashion. I don't... <clears throat> Sarah and I... Sarah's a breadwinner in our family. It's the complete opposite from when I was growing up, or when we were growing up. And uh, I don't make a, necessarily what you would call a living at my, my profession, but we do, Sarah and I, make a life for ourselves. And I hope that these young people coming in that are doing the wood firing exchange and that are, are spending the time to develop themselves that they can go forward and make a life for themselves that's artful and meaningful and wherever they set roots down that it, it, it that they create place that they create place where people gather that creates and empowers the people that gather to do better for themselves and better for everybody around them. If that means St. Joe, if that means Sioux Falls, if that means the cities, I mean, that's what the gallery is. I don't want to own a gallery. I do want to have a space where apprentices and students and interns and assistants and other artists have an opportunity to be visible locally to expand what we have in our small town, in our region, and also flatten the playing field globally for visibility that way with all the social media that's out there. And when Brady and Johnny and Jenna, Johnny and Brady specifically, when they're done with their wood firing exchange for this July and August, end of July, first week of August is Brady's exhibition at the gallery. Johnny's is the last two weeks of August. All these things and this energy and this conversation that some of you have spoke with tonight comes out there of this is the thing that I've been working on to develop my tools that I can go forward and hopefully be professional and hopefully I can follow this passion that they have that may be different from what I have but that it's solid that it adds to the base whether it's here across the world I feel very, very humbled to be here this evening, to be sharing this with all of you. There are so many very close friends. You know, there's a, it's an old Native American belief of only take as much as you can carry. So we go back, this year it was three times, and we brought back in the pickup 26 buckets worth of clay. <clears throat> and we will con continue doing that with the place where I grew up and that re relationship with my parents and with the family and the land as long as we can, whether it's available down the road or not. It's not my material, and it's not my parents' material, but what, whether it's realized or not, Johnny and Brady and Jenna and anybody else that's come through the studio has such a close relationship with my family, day in and day out, is very, 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 very important.
It's not my parents' clay. It was here before us. It has its own voice. We just feel very thankful to be able to share with what it is for its true self and how we make work that is a conversation, sometimes very frustrating conversation. But nonetheless, it's not just um, changing it completely because we can't. So, that being said, I feel very, very, very thankful for all of you to be here this evening and sharing some space together. I hope we can do it again with the green grass and a cup of tea (laughs) in our yard.